Hello, and welcome to Triggered Care. I'm Alex. Recently, this channel has reached 200 subscribers, which is awesome. I, just like with 100 subscribers, I never expected to have this many people watching my videos. I'm very grateful for all of you. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to all the oldies. I really appreciate you. Now it's been a minute since I've uploaded a video and I'm gonna get into why that is along with a big decision that I've made just in the last couple weeks. And what I've been up to, my script is very bare bones so I'm gonna just kinda be venting about life for this video. So if you enjoy my vlog type videos, this is for you. Um, so let's get right into it. Last week I made the decision to go back onto disability fully after trying out this new job that honestly there were parts of it that I adored and I was working as a special education assistant and the parts that I adored was working with the children because children fill me with joy. I just enjoy their sense of humor. I enjoy their ways of communicating. They seem a lot easier to communicate with than most adults. And I think part of that is I have a, li a very literal interpretation of things most of the time. I don't mean to be that way, just I do. So the subtleties of casual conversation with adults are usually lost on me. I don't know how to conversate with them when I try to talk about my interest and what I uh, spend my adult life researching and makes other adults very uncomfortable. So the interactions with my coworkers were considerably more difficult than assisting a disabled child. I, I could assist disabled children all day and it, it'd be fun, um, but it was the adult interactions that really put me in a spot where I needed time off. I will put it nicely like that. Uh, I can't really speak too much in detail about the situations that were going on or what sort of work stress I had just to protect students' identities and all of that. But I can say that I find a lot of issues with the school system and the way that they run things and the way that they view neurodivergency and those two worldviews clashing became too much for me to handle. Uh, I had a psych appointment halfway through this experience and my psychiatrist was like, yeah, Alex, you're getting traumatized every time you go to work. So after work, it makes sense that you're having panic attacks every day. And so, and that has to do with my personal triggers and with what can re-traumatize me. So I've decided to take this break. Now that I have some time off, that started last week, uh, I slept for days. At first I was very low on sleep because the anxiety of going to work would actually make it so I couldn't sleep at night so I was functioning on four to six hours of sleep maybe a day while going to work and dealing with these stresses so immediately I think I slept for like 20 hours one weekend that I had uh, just continually napping and that continued last week and now I'm finally starting to be awake more to try to process, you know, what do I need to do for my recovery? Now that I have time and I have some assurance that, like financially, that I'll be okay, what do I do? I haven't been disabled without a job in a couple years. It's been about two years since I uh, was jobless. And before that, I was married. And so a lot of that um, free time, if you even want to call it free time, was dealing with the marriage and being a stay-at-home mom before my son was going to school. And so I have this opportunity 
that I've never had before to actually take time off and to reflect on the last couple years of trauma and to try to process it. And to be honest, that is terrifying to me to think about everything that's happened the last couple of years. And that was a comfort that I took from going to work was, well, I'm too busy to really deal with this stuff. I'm too busy to think about this stuff. I had a sexual assault experience last month or two months ago now. It was in September and it's hard for me to remember which month it is anymore. Um, And that really drained a lot of my energy and made everything more difficult. But of course, did I acknowledge it? No. Did I let my work know? No, I didn't. I just continued to go to work and pretended that everything was fine. And I'm still kind of in that of like, well, it happened again, but what can you do about it? Uh, I, and part of that is, I'm at a loss. I don't know. I guess the lesson that I've learned from all of these assaults is that they can come from anywhere at any time from whoever. It does not matter if you trust the person. It does not matter if you've known them for a while. It just, it doesn't matter. It just can happen. And like, I knew that, but this last one really got the despair in me. So I've been despairing quite a bit while trying to survive and figure everything out. And so, so far what I've done recovery wise is I've been putting a lot of time into art and I've been drawing a lot and I will showcase some pictures now while I continue to talk about my drawing because I did this October challenge thing where it had this prompt list and so you would draw whatever related to the prompt word and I did really enjoy that and even while I was working I made time especially on the weekends to catch up on the prompt list and to draw as much as I can and I tried out a new art style that I've really been enjoying even though as you can tell with the art I've been very very sad Uh, but it does help me get those emotions out in a way Uh, I've been trying to keep up on my journaling and video diaries, but I have not been great at that because I will forget about it for weeks and then I'll remember, oh yeah, I should probably document something. And part of that is just forcing myself to work for a couple months in a new environment where I'm clashing with a lot of my coworkers. Um, go figure did a number to my memory. It did a number to my functioning. And with the physical demands that were on my body on top of the emotional distress that was going on, physically, I, all my old injuries have reignited and, um, are either bleeding or burning. So that's great. I have arthritis in my right knee that has been grumpy just for months. It's been grumpy. So that's also been something that I've been dealing with. Um, and yeah, that's what I've been up to. And I've attempted to make, I don't even know, like six videos for this channel in that time. But every time that I would get done making a video, I'd be like, well, that was so emotional. And that was so Uh, scattered brain and this is probably going to be a bit scattered brain too but I just I really want to upload again and I think there are things that need to be talked about Uh, for instance the mass denial going on that's one thing I notice at my new workplace is people do not like talking about what we just went through with the pandemic they don't like talking about their own personal pain that's going on. They don't like to hear about my personal pain that's going on. It's almost like I, every time I tried to talk to someone, it was like I was shattering this image of um, a nice picket fence life. And then I would come in with some 
depressing and stuff and then they'd be like what's wrong with you and it's like i'm not even trying to be depressing i'm not even trying to be sad you asked me how i'm doing and i responded honestly and that ruined your day apparently like not everybody knows the small talk jargon you know and because i couldn't fit into that uh i was very much ostracized from the group of people that I was supposed to be working with and I don't necessarily take that personally I know that I can be an activating person to talk to and I know that a lot of people's initial reactions especially to honest talk about struggle will be to run away from it because that is a trigger reaction, right? To fly away, to get away from that. And so I'm not judging that reaction at all. I understand it. I just think that my perspective was needed in that environment and it was not appreciated at all. So now I got to try to focus on myself, which is... I I don't want to. I don't want to focus on myself. I... With all the loss that I have experienced in the last two years, I don't want to focus on myself. And I've almost used my jobs where I'm helping vulnerable people to distract from my own stuff. And to be like, well, if I can support them, if I can make them happy, then I can be happy. But it's very apparent that my body is just like, no. You're going to take some time to think about your things. And it's intimidating and it's scary. And I don't even know how to start. Um, other than my dog barking in the background. Uh, I, I don't know. So, yeah, I also just, I feel worn out. I feel so worn out. I feel so tired all the time. And maybe that will be a, just my recovery is that I sleep for weeks on end. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, which is terrifying. I am having trouble connecting with people, which is also kind of scary. And my dog will continue barking until I bring him back in. So I might end this video on this note of like, I'm, I'm thinking of videos to make. I have opinions that I want to share, but just this is where I've been. This is why I haven't uploaded. And thank you so much for the subscribers and the likes and the comments. Your validation and your support really does help me through the struggle of what life is. So I really appreciate everything. So I hope all y'all have good ones.